22. I want to show you two mysteries. It's an impartation. When Moses was leading God's people from Egypt to the land flowing with milk and honey, something happened that the Bible records. Moses cried to be led by God and the Bible says, the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud and by night in a pillar of fire. Very profound statement. He went before them by day in a pillar of cloud and then by night it was not cloud again. It was a pillar of fire. So we see that this concept of the Holy Spirit being revealed as fire and the Holy Spirit being revealed as the rain is scattered all through scriptures. Now, just for your knowledge, the Holy Spirit has the liberty to express himself in various forms and various fashions. All through scripture, we see that the Holy Spirit operates in um, many ways, sometimes unusual ways. The Bible likens him to a dove. The Bible likens him to fire. The Bible likens him to water. And these are all metaphors that attempt to explain dimensions of his ministry. Are we together? So is, uh, Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15 says, Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. It says, Then the wilderness is counted for a fruitful field or vine, and a fruitful field is counted for a forest. Tonight, there are two dimensions of the Holy Spirit. Impartations from those dimensions will be receiving. The Holy Spirit is going to be coming like rain and he's going to be coming like fire. But I need you to understand the implication to those dimensions so that you do not just shout amen. These are the two dimensions of the Holy Spirit that we need as far as revival is concerned. He comes like rain and he comes like fire. He comes like rain and he comes like fire. Can I talk about that for one minute? He comes like rain and he comes like fire. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29. Let's talk about fire for a moment. That God is a consuming fire. Say that after me. God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29. That God is a consuming fire. And I wrote here that fire is often used as a sign of God's presence. Like we find in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 2. Moses saw a bush that was burning and yet not consumed. And he said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes from where thou standest is holy ground. So we see that fire has been used as a sign of his presence. Fire has always been used as an instrument of judgment in scripture and has also been used as an instrument to demonstrate God's power. You find many expressions of judgment in the Bible that happened that occurred through fire. But you also find manifestations of the power of God like it was in the life of Elijah. Elijah, you find that in 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18 from verse 38 to 40. The Bible says, then the fire of the Lord. I like what it's called. The fire of the Lord. The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifices and the wood and the stones and the dust. Look what happened immediately. The fire fell. Next verse, please. The Bible says, now, when all the people saw it, when they saw the fire, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Final verse. And Elijah said to them, you seize the prophets and met out judgment upon them. 
fire is always connected to judgment and fire is also connected to the display of God's power. Is someone learning? So that you understand and appreciate what you are about to receive. On the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and verse 3, the Bible says, verse 1, it says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together and in one accord. Suddenly the Bible says that there was a sound and that sound was as of a rushing mighty wind. It came and it filled the room. Then verse 3, it says, There appeared unto them cloven or divided tongues as of fire. And it sat upon each and every one of them. Recall that Jesus had told them that um, John was speaking and he said, there's one who is mightier than me. Matthew chapter 3, you find that. That when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now they were receiving that baptism in Acts chapter 2 and verse 3. A bit about fire. Fire purifies by bringing separation. You need to understand that. Every time God wants to bring separation in the life of a man, he introduces the Holy Spirit as fire. Fire purifies. And it does that by separating dross from treasure. Are we together now? Yeah. Gold is refined when it is subjected to fire. Intense fire. Then a separation occurs. Fire purifies by bringing separation. Number two, fire burns and it consumes. This is powerful. Fire burns and it consumes. And I added here, it reduces anything to its lowest point. Fire sustains the ability to reduce anything. Isn't it amazing that as beautiful as this auditorium is, you set it on fire and you'll be amazed at what you will find left. Have you seen rubbles being burnt? Voluminous rubbles give a few minutes under the influence of fire and they are burnt to ashes. Fire can reduce anything to its lowest point. This is powerful because when that impartation comes upon you, there are things that will be burnt, there are things that will be destroyed. Fire burns and fire consumes. Hallelujah. The effect of fire cannot be stopped except when the fire is quenched. You cannot stop the effect of fire. The only way to stop the effect of fire is to quench it. But for as long as the fire is burning, it continues to burn everything before it. So when you receive that baptism of fire to be a witness and to be an extension of God's revival agenda, the meaning of that is that anything that stands before you stands before your family. Are we together? You cannot, for as long as that fire is burning, it will consume it and destroy it. So do not be surprised when cancers melt fire for you. It reduces anything, anything at all. To its lowest point. Now not to play with your mind. I have been intrigued for many years. At this concept of cremation. And it's amazing how that an adult of full size. Sometimes you use pounds here. We use kg back in Africa. So let's say for instance 100 kg. 120 kg. That's someone who is quite big. And yet that person is cremated. And all that is left is in a jar fire for you. So every problem that stands before you under the influence of fire can be deflated. That includes mountains. Does that sound like someone's testimony? Fire burns. Fire divorce. Fire consumes. It is amazing that fire is never afraid. It is not threatened by any environment you keep it. Provided the conditions for its burning is there, it will burn until it burns everything away. You can box it, you can hold it. Now you see, there's something about fire I need you to understand. Fire produces light 
and it produces heat. Hmm. Your skin is not affected by the light. It is your eyes that is affected by the light that comes from fire. But your skin is affected by the heat. Fire produces light for your eyes and heat for your skin. That when you are cold, fire is able to influence the temperature of the room. Are we together? And you are not able to see fire burning, but you see the heat. Or you feel the heat that comes from it. And it affects your own temperature. Do you know what that means? When the fire of God comes, wherever you enter, you don't have to shout and be noisy. You just have to stay there for a while. It's a spiritual air conditioning system. Don't be surprised that you step into a mall and you see someone who is demonized, possessed with a devil, looking at you some and you just find a demon going out. Fire. He makes his angels, winds and his ministers flames of fire. You step into a place and you begin to influence the spiritual climate. Are we together? You believe that? That you are in your office and someone would tell you, I sense, I don't know what is happening to me, but it's like, it's like fire going through and you tell them, that's right, I just came from the sound of revival. Absolutely. <laughs> when the Holy Ghost manifests in your life as fire, he will burn, he will judge, he will destroy everything that is not of God. And then he empowers you to reveal the power of God, reducing and deflating difficult circumstances. There are things you think will not burn. Set them on fire and watch what happens. Sometimes they may not burn immediately. Allow some time. Isn't it amazing that everything literally, look at this stage. Everything. There is nothing here that cannot be affected by fire. You keep increasing the temperature and everything on earth can be reduced by fire. No wonder the judgment will happen by fire. Reducing everything and wrapping up this age. I'm saying this because when that fire comes upon you, some of you will begin to see remarkable miracles in your life remarkable manifestations of the hand of God. Are we together? That you will lay hands on the sick and they will tell you, I can't find the growth again. The Holy Spirit revealed as fire, manifesting as fire. Very quickly, let me talk about the Holy Spirit as the rain. The Bible tells us that when the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, Every wilderness, lack of productivity, no fruitfulness. It says the wilderness is turned into a fruitful field. And then a fruitful field is turned into a forest. Do you know what that means? The Holy Spirit revealed as rain or water represents his life-giving ministry. Jesus said in John chapter 7, when you read from verse um, 39, I believe, he said, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. And then the Bible says, this speak he of the Holy Spirit. It was a metaphor that was describing the life-giving ministry of the Holy Spirit. You cannot experience revival if you do not receive that empowerment of the Holy Spirit as a river. A river that flows. From Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, the Bible says a river came out from the east of Eden and it parted itself into four. Are we together? The Euphrates, Pishon, Gihon, and Hidakel. And the Bible says that this river parted itself and there was gold, there was dilium. It began to list all kinds of minerals. One that went down to Ethiopia that had gold and the gold is good. Revelations, we also see a river flowing from the throne. And the Bible says that river would produce a kind of tree whose healing, whose leaves are for the healing of the nation. 
When you talk about the Holy Spirit as rain or water, you talk about life. Everybody say, I'm a life-giving spirit. It's important that you know this. I am a life-giving spirit. You are not a nuisance to anyone around you. You have to give yourself a renewed orientation after this impartation. Are we together? That you are a blessing to everyone you meet. Everyone at all. Because you are a giver. There's a river that flows from you. There's a river that flows through you. Flowing to your office. Flowing to your loved ones. Flowing in your church. That means you are always a plus. Not a minus. You don't divide. You add. You multiply. You bring increase. Nothing dies around you because... You have received the impartation of the power of the Holy Spirit manifesting as a river. I carry this consciousness. You may have heard me say it in my teachings that I do not believe I will encounter any man and have that person go back the same way. No. It's not pride. It's the truth. I believe this with all my heart. This is why I know that it's impossible for you to return the same way you came. That's the secret behind the teachings that you hear. So they will tell you, I just listened to one and I could not stop because there's a grace on it. The fire and the rain. The fire and the river. The fire burns. The fire purifies. When the Holy Spirit comes as fire, he does an inner work in you. It is strange because the water also cleanses. Are we together? You don't wash your clothes with fire. Who knows what technology can do? But as far as we know, you don't wash your clothes with fire. You don't wash your plates with fire. You need water. Now when you lack water and you lack fire, you will die. Show me a man who does not have access to light and does not have access to water. I show you a man who is about to die. You want to be a blessing to the world, to be an extension of this revival power? You must receive tonight this dimension of the Holy Spirit as fire and this dimension of the Holy Spirit as a river. Then you are a blessing. You can leave this place knowing that you have received something that the nations will thank God and thank you for. As fire and as rain. So when you meet people, something burns within them. Like the men in Emmaus. The Bible says, did our hearts not burn? Did our hearts not burn? Fire. When you preach under that influence, I remember Reinhard Bonke of Blessed Memory. He would shout and talk about the flames and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Wasn't a very loud person, but that fire would amplify the thing that he was saying and you would see that fire transforming people. If you are a preacher without fire, you would not be able to do much for the kingdom. You are a businessman without fire, you would not be able to, to do much for the kingdom. So the inner work of the fire, it refines you, it purifies you, but you become an extension of that fire. Have you seen how a volcano flows? Just burns and roasts and destroys everything. The molten magma, as it spills out from under the earth, that's how you can be. Like an inferno, like a volcano, destroying the works of darkness. You step into a family and say, I come in the name of Jesus. And by that fire, you announce to every spirit, every demon, every yoke of darkness that a witness has arrived. Perhaps I should recap my teaching in the morning. I told you that there are four levels and transitions. Remember? The transition from an unbeliever to a witness that it starts with an unsaved person. When you encounter Jesus, you are a believer. However, a believer that is not transformed, a believer that is a babe, an infant. 
And that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Word, and the ministry of a teaching priest, the journey to transformation begins, and then you eventually evolve to a transformed believer. And that when you are a transformed believer, you are ready for the next phase, empowerment. You still remember that? And that it is only the empowered believer who is called a witness. Empowerment is not necessary when there is no transformation. To seek transformation or to seek empowerment without transformation is to pour water in a container that is, you know, is opened. You'll be wasting the water. And this is what is happening to many people. They desire impartations. They desire anoint me, anoint me. And yet there's no transformation. Jesus was not in a hurry to anoint the disciples. He trained them. On the strength of their transformation, they could receive an impartation. And they became witnesses. Again, let me repeat. An unsaved person, you encounter Jesus Christ. You become a believer, albeit an infant. You can't do much for the kingdom in this state. And then through the teaching ministry, in partnership with the word of God and the spirit of the living God, that transition happens to you. You get to a point where you are called a transformed believer. You are still not a witness. You can't be used as a revival agent. You are transformed. You are not in ignorance, but you do not have the empowerment to defend the things that you believe. You need to move to the next phase empowerment giving credence to your convictions now you're not just saying the reality of the spirit can be demonstrated through your life at that point of empowerment you are no longer just called a believer you are called a witness that is the kind of vessel that can host the revival fire and now i'm saying that in receiving that revival fire the holy ghost wants to reveal himself tonight first as fire and then as the rain. Isn't it amazing that fire and water complement themselves? When it gets too hot, you need cold water. Like when you are thirsty, you don't need fire. If I light fire in a container and give you as a gift when you are thirsty, you would call me an enemy. But you would call me a friend when it's a cold night. You have a fridge, you have a chimney in your house. Both are important for your survival. When you are thirsty, tired, walked up, you open your fridge and you rejoice while taking a cold water. It's soothing, it's refreshing. But once there's cold, I don't know how cold it gets in America. How cold does it get? Chicago. Chicago. How cold? Give me an idea. Not as cold as Canada. Well, it gets cold. That's the most important thing. Ice there is water. And as important as it is, how many of you know that people have died because of that state? So at that point, you will need fire to provide warmth. You see, if you receive the Holy Ghost as fire alone, Sooner or later, you will find out that you are consuming everything before you. Attacking everything before you. When you are done being refined, when people are thirsty and hungry, they do not need fire. Fire is for the diseases, the infirmities. Are we together now? That's the part that needs the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn the cancers, the diseases, to burn the impurities, the inner work of the Spirit. But when it has to do with the ministry of life, it is water. We often say water is life. That flowing river, you flow that life to people. You can speak to one person and tell him in the name of Jesus, may my God change your life. You teach him the truth like our gentleman who came here. You see, that's the combination of fire and water. Fire and water. The effect of fire was on the spirits and the addictions and whatever it is. But water gave him life. 
Water is connected to abundance. Water is connected to increase. Fire is not necessarily connected to increase. It's only connected to purification. We are going to pray. The Holy Spirit is going to be resting on someone for the sake of the United States of America. The Holy Spirit is going to be resting on a mother, a sister, a preacher. And by this impartation, prophets will arise, apostles will arise, revivalists will arise in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this. Thank God for what he's already doing in America. But I can tell you from the authority of scripture that America is in desperate need of vessels that are available, aligned, and trained. I told you that when darkness looms across the land, the problem is not darkness. The problem is that the vessels that will carry the light are scarce or not there. Jesus said, pray that the Lord will send laborers. The problem is not the harvest. The problem is that there are no laborers. And everyone here, under the sound of my voice and the many who are connecting across the globe, as we wrap up this conference here in Dallas, Texas, I want you to know that God did not bring you here just to give you a spiritual information. There is a grace he wants to give you. He wants to deposit something upon your spirit that you will leave this place as a flame of fire, but you will also leave carrying the rain. The rain that will water every wilderness you get to, turning that wilderness to a fruitful field and that fruitful field to a forest. Is there a believer in this place? That means after this conference, listen, we shouldn't just rejoice that we had a great conference, wonderful conference. No, that's not the intent. That you carry this fire and you go to the marketplace, you go to the pulpit, you go to your home. We want to hear testimonies of mighty manifestations of the power of God. I want you to write me saying, Apostle, after this conference, watch how many people have been healed. Watch how many people have come to Jesus. Now you are justifying this revival mandate. If all you have is a memorial of a great program, you lost it. Make sure you take fire. Your fire today is the souvenir you are leaving this place with. That you pick that fire and tell people I came for a conference. I camped in the presence of God, soaking myself in worship, in prayer, hearing the word. And right now I have received, received fire. I have received that dimension of the Holy Spirit flowing like a river, bringing healing to nations. Do you believe that? I'm saying this because this is how God wants us to end this conference now. I have taught you on the principles of revival and please do well to get the teachings from yesterday night, this morning and even this session. Listen to it. But we're getting into a moment of prayer and then a moment to receive. I'm also going to speak over the sick. I'm not sure we'll have the time to take testimonies tonight. You can always, you know, announce your testimonies. We have to work with time. But we're getting into a season of impartation. Let me tell you what an impartation is. A transference of spiritual possibilities. That graces can be transferred. The Holy Spirit is already here. But remember, I taught you, it is the Spirit and the Bride that says, Come. There is a man of God here. You are in desperate need of an impartation because the way you are doing ministry, you will not succeed that way. You already know the truth, but the grace to defend your convictions is not there. This is why he brought you here. There is a prophet who needs to rise. There is an apostle who needs to rise. There is a marketplace apostle who needs a genuine impartation. Now, let me tell you something before we pray. I have told you that revival, please make, listen to my teaching, redefining the coming revival. I told you that the revival we're going to experience will not just be like Azusa Street, will not just be like the wealth revival. It will not just be a revival that is limited to the pulpit. Ambassadors will be dispersed across the seven mountains. Some in business, some in media, it is still a revival. It's important I paint for you a picture of how the revival looks like. It will not be a revival with preachers and crusades alone. 
No. It will be a revival that spills over to every walk of life. There is no aspect of human living that will be spared. When that move begins like it's begun tonight, every aspect, the economy, politics, education, family, our churches, my God, our churches, let me say that again, our churches, a reorientation, fresh fire upon pastors, upon leaders, teaching the truth with integrity but with fire the grace to be able to teach scripture and demonstrate the reality of the things you are teaching don't just say God can do it then share the grace man must taste and see that the Lord is good when you say he's a healer you must demonstrate that he's a healer when you say he lifts you must demonstrate through your life. Don't stay transformed alone. You must contend for empowerment. Many are transformed. Congratulations. But if you remain at the level of transformation and don't press for empowerment, you will say many things that are true but not have the grace to defend them. I've studied many revivals. Please listen to me. Lend me your attention. I'm about to say something now that is very powerful. There have been many moves of God that ended by producing another kind of error that destroyed the body. I want to solve that problem now. I have to say that before we wrap up. A move of God can start wonderfully well and end up as a disaster. It can end up putting people in bondage again. And I want to tell you what is wrong. I began that teaching in the morning when I explained to you a concept called the fullness of Christ. Everybody say that after me. The fullness of Christ. You find that in Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says when he led captivity captive, listen carefully, he gave unto some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. Are we together? Then the Bible says that we all come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. There is such a spiritual concept as the fullness of Christ. And I will tell you what that means. It is not a vague description. There are three dimensions that must be captured in the believer's life and must be captured in our delivering the benefits of revival if it is to last and end up being a blessing. Number one, I explained in the morning, is called the nature of Christ. Everybody say the nature of Christ. One more time, say the nature of Christ. The character of Christ is the first dimension of Christ that every believer must receive. And in selling Jesus to the nations, this is the first dimension we must sell to the nations. By sell, you understand what I mean. Are we together? The nature of Christ. It is the initial gift that everyone must receive. A revival, genuine revivals should give people an opportunity to become like Christ in experience. But hear this. When you receive of the nature of Christ, this is what happens to you. You step into the reality of holiness, righteousness, the fruit of the Spirit at work in you. You become a person of character. And that is wonderful. But if you stop there, you have not manifested the fullness of Christ. The second dimension is called the wisdom of Christ. The Bible tells us that Christ is revealed as the wisdom of God and is revealed as the power of God. Are we together now? So there are many revivals that imparted the consciousness of the nature of Christ, bringing men to holiness, bringing men to repentance, but it stopped there 
because the people who frontiered that revival did not know that there were other dimensions to press into. So the emphasis was abstinence from sin, holiness and righteousness and as wonderful as that is, the people became holy and righteous but they could not do any other thing with their lives again. They became miserable parents, even though holy people. They became ineffective in terms of growth. They could not build anything. They were not people who you would find with sin or unrighteousness, but they did not make progress because it is not the nature of Christ that brings progress. It is the wisdom of Christ. The Bible says through wisdom a house is built. Are we together? It says by understanding it is established. So if you embrace the nature of Christ and ignore the wisdom of Christ, you will fail in business, you will be broke, you will be limited even though you are a Christian. And that portrait of Jesus will not be one that will be received by many. People do not just want to receive the nature, they want to see the outworkings of the Christ translating to a decent and a meaningful life. Are we together now? Then we have the final dimension that makes the fullness of Christ, the power of Christ. We call it the works of Christ, bringing validation to Jesus Christ signs and wonders, supernatural manifestations by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because like I told you in the morning, spirits are real. And spirits don't care if the wisdom of Christ is at work in you, they will attack you and destroy whatever it is that you'll be destroyed. You see, Solomon got certain things and he missed certain things. That's why he ended in a very bad way. Every time you see a revival turn to destroy people. It is because Satan corrupted it by blinding the people who spearheaded the revival from embracing the fullness of Christ. So we have people who press towards the nature of Christ. We have others who focus on the wisdom of Christ, witty inventions, intelligent ideas, but they have no character. They will bribe, they will steal, they will do every kind of thing in the name of Jesus. You see, you see the manifestation of wisdom, but they do not have character. And then there are those who press towards the power dimension. They can pray, they can fast, and they do not even know when they begin to interact with familiar spirits because the wisdom that brings balance to their spiritual experience is not there. They just pray themselves into the realm of the spirit and whichever spirit they meet there, they interpret it as the Holy Spirit. Because the wisdom component is missing. So you will see a semblance of power. But when you look well, you find out that there, there are many things that are inconsistent. And it is the wisdom of God that reveals those flaws. So the revival that Jesus is bringing to America is not just bringing the nature of Christ. In addition to it, you must receive the wisdom of Christ. Are we learning? And then the power of Christ. So we expect people of character, loving Jesus, holiness, righteousness. But we also expect people who by this time next year will own their own homes. By this time next year will be able to pay the bills of their children. Are we together? We don't want believers just jumping and shouting hallelujah and living miserable lives. No. Hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. Every time you remain hungry, you will find yourself as a slave in Egypt. Are we together? But then we do not just want people who are wise, intellectual, scientific, and then they downplay the power of God because you see, no matter how intelligent you are, with all due respect, there are professors who have battled with cancer. At that point, what you need is not wisdom. What you need is power. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works? It says, through the greatness of thy power. There are things that only answer to power. They don't answer to discussions. Demons don't answer to formulas. They answer to power. Someone say power. Shout it one more time. Say power. And so as we begin to pray, please open up your heart to receive the fullness of Christ. And in selling Jesus to the nations as a preacher, 
as an advocate of revival, do not compartmentalize this and rob people of an opportunity. Don't just emphasize his character and live out his wisdom and his power. Don't just emphasize his wisdom and live out character and power. Don't just emphasize power and live out wisdom and character. It is the character of Christ plus the wisdom of Christ plus the power of Christ. That is the fullness. That is the complete package of revival. Are we learning? The nature of Christ, it will cause the nations to see that you are Christ-like. But when you open your mouth, it's not the nature that comes out. It is wisdom. My heart is indicting a good matter, he says. Yea, I speak of excellent things. He says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. That is the wisdom of the Spirit. So when you sit in that boardroom, they are not looking for a man of character. They want an individual that translates the wisdom of the Spirit. Solving real solutions. Bringing real solutions. Listen, it was not just character that took Joseph to the throne. Character kept him from Potiphar's house, but he still went to prison. Character had exhausted his assignment. He needed wisdom. It was by the wisdom of the Spirit he was enthroned as a prime minister. If Joseph remained in prison, you would not fault him on the basis of character. But he still did not become a prime minister because wisdom is an elevator. You can have character and never be promoted because those who want to promote you are looking for solutions. Solutions. This is the major challenge I submit to you with the body of Christ. We choose one dimension of God that appeals to our orientation at the expense of others. So if I come from a background that advocates the nature of Christ, I stay there and frown at every other dimension to my detriment. So you find holy, wonderful people, but their children begging, they remain mediocre, transferring poverty, transferring limitations, and yet they love Jesus. And when you look at them, you cannot understand why such an individual would love Jesus so much and never be able to live a fuller and a richer life. Then you find an individual building houses, making progress, having resources, but there's nothing about, the closer you come to them, the more you see that they are not Christ-like. They speak well, they teach well, you, they can hold a Bible and give you a sound exegesis. Wisdom is there, but there's no character. And then there are people who are so powerful, you only come to them when you are sick. As soon as you are healed, you run away by yourself because you know that remaining there after the ministry of power is a risk. It ought not to be so. I hope you are not just laughing. We are wrapping up this conference. I need to put this icing on that cake so that you leave this place knowing that I received the fullness of Christ and that in releasing that revival flame, you allow it to release upon people and you are selling a Jesus that will profit the nations. Manifesting his nature, manifesting his wisdom and manifesting his power. Let's say that together. Manifesting his nature, uh -huh. manifesting his wisdom and manifesting his power. One last time. Manifesting his nature, manifesting his wisdom and manifesting his power. That is revival. Revival that lasts. So when you come here, you find a believer who is furnished with character, loving Jesus, sincere, with integrity. And then you move to the boardroom and you stand before cosmos and he exudes the intelligence of the spirit. You know that this man's praying in tongues has results, economic results. But then when Satan and all his cohorts attack, he takes off his tie and puts on his priestly regalia and says, I am not just a CEO. Don't mistake my intelligence in the boardroom. I am also a prophet. I am also a man of God. I can shift climates by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what you are becoming.
the nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the power of Christ. This is my parting gift to you. Sell a complete Jesus to the nations. Don't sell a lopsided Jesus to the nations. Listen, it is the reason why many of our children are running away from church. Because something else is giving them the wisdom that we refuse to give them. And they are seeing the results. We are trying to give them the nature of Christ. But they said, I watched you with the nature of Christ. And we suffered because you went to church. I don't want that kind of Jesus. So if the internet, if Babylon and his system will give me a semblance of wisdom, even if it is at the expense of my soul, at least let me have the fruits of wisdom. And then there are others in search for power have joined all kinds of satanic occultic groups in desperate need for power. But here is a generation presenting the complete Jesus. We are restoring the fullness of Christ to our pulpits. We are restoring the fullness of Christ that when we evangelize, it does not just stop. It starts with the nature of Christ. Listen, look up. Don't, the arrangement matters. Don't sell wisdom before the nature. It starts with character as the foundation. Then wisdom is added to it. Once you tamper with the formula, you will produce something else that is not Jesus. Are we together? Before you sell the wisdom of Christ to any man, what they need is a change of nature. When you meet a sinner, he does not need counseling. He needs Jesus, the life of God. That whole nature has to go for a new one to come. But when that happens, discipleship and structured mentorship begins to evolve that weak person to become a valuable asset in the kingdom. And then, power will be waiting at the end of transformation. And when that individual is empowered, you will present that person as a gift to the nations and heaven will thank you. Pastors, use this model to mentor your members. Get them saved, get them born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Teach them on character. Let the inner work of the Spirit happen through them. Then you start to teach them the principles of the kingdom as it concerns their lives, as it concerns walking in victory. Then, at the other end of their compliance and their transformation, that they collide with genuine, authentic, apostolic power. Then release them like the foxes of Samson and watch what happens in America. Revival is not difficult when you understand the formula. When the formula is tampered with, you will find wise people who are wise in the flesh with no character. You will find people who are powerful with no wisdom. So power brings many things that wisdom cannot preserve because wisdom is a preserver. Can we pray now? Please rise. Is right. Hallelujah. Now here's what we're going to do very quickly. Now is the time to pass your requests. Please go ahead and pass your prayer requests. There are ushers at every aisle, I believe. So bring out your requests. We're going to pray in the Spirit for a few minutes. Pass your request to the person at the extreme left or extreme right of your row. Don't worry, it's no one is reading your request so that you'll be collated very, very quickly. While that is happening, we're going to spend the next two to three minutes praying in tongues. You are absorbing this revelation you heard tonight. Lord, I desire to live out the fullness of Christ in my life and then through my life to the nations. I desire to be a manifestation of the character of Christ the wisdom of Christ and the power that is in the Christ. Did you get the prayer request? The, the prayer point. The character of Christ, 
the wisdom of Christ and the power of the Christ. Go ahead and begin to pray in the Spirit everywhere. 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 America pray America pray we're advocating a generation that will fan the flames of revival revealing the character of Christ revealing the wisdom of Christ revealing the power of Christ no imbalance, no lopsidedness, a people of character, holiness, righteousness, a people of profound wisdom, wisdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers, and then the power of the Holy Ghost bringing validation to the life of Christ, to the claims of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Are you praying? Watching across the nations of the earth, make sure you pray. Make sure you pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let me be that vessel that manifests the fullness of Christ. Let me be that vessel that manifests the fullness of Christ, the nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, and the power of Christ, the nature of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, and the power of the Christ. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Everyone, let me have your attention, please. If there is anything that is not working in your Christian life, the answer is in one of these three dimensions. Addictions, all kinds of demonic troubles is threatening your manifesting the character of Christ. And what solves that problem is the power of Christ. Because counseling alone will not take away addiction. They are, they are products of spirits and influences. So when you introduce power to this individual like it happened to our dear brother, that person is free, free to experience that life. Then by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, listen, what you call the fruit of the Spirit is the outworking of the life of God through a recreated human spirit. Love, joy, peace. Are we together? Regardless what your background is, you will find yourself manifesting like a Christian indeed. You don't act one way in church and act another way. You are angry, you are fighting, insulting people, hating on people and still praying in tongues. What you need is the nature of Christ. Listen, with this education, you can be a blessing to anyone you meet. When you see people struggling, you see church people not manifesting the character of Christ, you know how to help them. You don't condemn them, but you know that the area of deficiency is that there is a threat to this dimension of the fullness of Christ. Then when you find a brother always coming to church, loving Jesus, but not making progress in his life, what that brother needs in addition to character, he's gotten the first phase well, like Aquila and Priscilla, you call him and say, there are other dimensions to Christ. Embrace the wisdom of Christ. Learn the laws of the kingdom. Make a great life for yourself and your children. Don't live in failure and mediocrity and use church to justify it. No. Then that brother, you heard what he said? As the Holy Ghost walked upon him, it brought in him a consciousness that you should not be this way. And he kept listening. And in one year, owned his home. That's the wisdom of Christ. 
Wisdom always delivers. It builds. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says now, it said we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 says now to the intent that now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the ecclesia, the church, the manifold, many-sided wisdom of God. There are people who will rise from this conference. They will build businesses that will fund the gospel. They will rewrite the narratives. Are we together now? That the believer in America will not be seen as a victim, a social victim who is just consoling himself with spirituality. We are victors. We have the life of God. And that life can be translated. Our world can see his wisdom at work in us. And then the power dimension. How we need that power to break yokes, to lift up burdens. The yoke is lifted. The burden is destroyed not by wisdom, by the anointing. Hallelujah. And I told you that he's flowing tonight as rain and as fire. Are you ready now? Father, send the rain and send the fire. Someone is praying. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Send the rain and send the fire. Send the rain and send the fire. Someone is praying. Spirit of the living God, come as fire and come as rain. 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 Let me be a life-giving spirit. A stream releasing life to the nations. A flame of fire burning every dross. Being a threat to darkness. Just allow me invite Pastor McDowell and Pastor Lan. Please, can you join? Um, we're going to be praying over this request very quickly. I believe in the power of prophetic prayers. Pastor Nat will be joining me. We'll be joining all four of us. I want you to stretch your hands and begin to pray. The Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Make declarations by the Spirit that these Egyptians I see today... I will see them no more. Come on, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Let's honor Pastor McDowell as he comes. We're standing by faith and we're going to be making declarations. Go ahead, we're praying. One church. One church. When we pray, I'll just give them the mics and they'll make prophetic declarations. We're speaking over America we are speaking over your needs. Shalaka paratos yata. Take a minute to pray. Every mountain that stands before Zerubbabel, you give way at the shout, grace, grace. At the shout, grace, grace. At the shout, grace, grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare over every request now, every petition that's made before you, that you will release a suddenly answer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Father, I thank you that you will release miracle signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that as your people have, in, have joined you and partnered with you in faith, you will begin to release revelation and insight and wisdom and power and grace and speed and healing and deliverance and miracles in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we stand here right now using these prayers here as points of contact for your power. And we declare in the name of Jesus that every desire that is expressed in this place, they become manifestations. They become manifestations to your glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up these desires. We declare all over America, everywhere, manifestations, special miracles by your hand. Special miracles taking place right now, right now, filling the earth with your character, with your nature, with your wisdom, with your power. In the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, we thank you for your fire that has consumed this request. Your fire has come now and consumed this request. And like incense, they arise as answers. We declare that every water has become wine. Every water has become wine. This is a water to wine report. This is a water to wine report. This is a water to wine report. In the name of Jesus, the Lord has done it finally. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. Shabba. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And standing under this corporate grace, in the name of Jesus, I put a seal to these prayers. I decree and declare a harvest of answers. A harvest of testimonies. I say it again, a harvest of answers. A harvest of testimonies. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sirs. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, I want to release this grace upon you. We have three more things to do very quickly and we're done. It's time for someone to receive this impartation. Father, you have brought us to America to bring a sound of revival. And now like fire and like rain upon men and women, sons and daughters in ministry, in business, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands right now let the fire of the holy ghost revival fire genuine revival fire let it fall upon you now shout a believers amen let it fall upon you now let it fall upon you now take the fire take the fire take the fire to your homes take the fire to your offices Take the fire to your businesses. Take the fire to your churches. Take the fire in the name of Jesus. Revival fire. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare over the north, the south, the east and the west of the United States. Let revival fire burn. Let revival fire burn. Let revival fire burn. In every church, let it burn. In every street, let it burn. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare over America, let apostles rise. I say this by the power of the Holy Spirit. I come as one sent in the name of the Lord. Let there be an apostolic community forged out of fire men and women who arise in the name of Jesus let prophets arise 
let evangelists rise where are the new generation red hat bunkers arise the new generation tl osborns arise the new generation billy grahams arise catherine coolman's arise in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare kingdom driven entrepreneurs kingdom driven businessmen in the name of jesus christ let that grace rest upon you let that grace rest upon you let that grace rest upon you in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah there are graces you are about to receive this grace called favor I want to impart that grace upon someone. God can help men and he can place a grace on men that redefines their possibilities. You've heard the testimonies. It's your turn now. I stretch my hands by the mercies of God. The one who gives gifts to men and the one who enables men. Hear me, U.S., in the name of Jesus, this is a privileged land that has all kinds of things that are good for life and godliness. By this impartation, receive a strange order of favor. A strange order of favor. Men running over themselves to help you, running over themselves to hold your hands. By the favor of the Lord, let doors be opened. Ephata, let doors be opened. Ephata, let doors be opened. Ephata, let doors be opened. In the name of Jesus, I call you a well watered garden. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is a grace for speed. That can bring acceleration to a man's life within a short time. I pray for you. Where you have been delayed. Where you have suffered retrogression. I come as a prophetic midwife. I push you to your next season. I push you to your next season. Your next season in ministry. I push you to your next season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But the greatest gift I want you to receive tonight by mercy and by grace I'm praying that someone will receive a gift of hunger. Hunger for spiritual things. Hunger for the presence of God. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts after you. My heart pants for you. As in a dry and a weary land. It says to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. I pray for someone. Receive the gift of hunger. Passion for God. Passion for spiritual things. Passion for Jesus. Passion for spiritual things. Passion for the house of God. Passion for the things of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I promise to do it. Give me one minute to do it. Place your hand. You are trusting God for healing. I want to take a minute to speak over you. Feel free to testify through any of our platforms. But in the name of Jesus, I pray over you and over the nations. I hope you know nations can be healed. Men can be wounded. Nations can be wounded. Jesus heals lands, not just bodies. I declare healing over your body. From the crown of your head, even to the soles of your feet. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Blood conditions be healed. Everyone here trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I prophesy upon you according to the time of life. Return with your testimony. Trusting God for jobs 
in the name of Jesus we release jobs I decree and declare some of you before December you will own your properties I say to you as a prophetic word before December you will own your own properties you may not see wind you may not see rain but I prophesy that your valley will be filled with water in the name of Jesus Christ Tonight I release you as a witness. I release you as a sign and a wonder. In the name of Jesus. My final assignment. America, hear the word of the Lord. Lift up your heads. O ye gates. From the north, the south, the east and the west of America. I come by this apostolic and prophetic mantle and I speak over America. The altars that hold on to the destinies of men, not allowing the purposes of God to be established. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare that gates crumble now. Ancient spirits give way now. You hear me? I understand you are in a very strategic season is the election of America I pray that God will do something that will bring glory to his name in America we speak over your presidency the White House we speak over your members of Parliament we speak over every state in America in the name of Jesus we declare that Christ is enthroned in America Christ is enthroned in America. Christ is enthroned in America. That the flames of revival will never die in America. That a generation will never arise that will corporately reject Jesus. In the name of Jesus, may one generation declare his praise to another. America, hear me. Take your eyes away from some of the things that you feel are going wrong. Don't insult and tear down your nation. No. I know that things may be happening that are not yet the best, but see the best in America. America is a great nation. I came to remind you that America is a great nation. Like every other nation, there is no nation that does not have something they need to work on. Are we together? Let's be mindful of the things we say about America. There might be decadence in some areas, but there is a remnant. There are people who love Jesus. There are Samuels rising. There are Gideons rising. Now hear me. Three times we are going to shout this with faith. God bless America. Are you ready? One to go. God bless America again God bless America again God bless America hallelujah hallelujah let me your attention this is my final altar call thank you for enduring the stretch this is our last moment together for now. Thousands have come from all across this nation and many others following across the globe. How do I end such a service without giving someone an opportunity to receive Jesus, to receive of his nature? For someone, you walked into this place confused not knowing what your life will be about after now perhaps you were invited and you came to enjoy a great program I appreciate you for coming but hear me the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever it's a blessing for whosoever believeth on him the Bible declares that he should not perish but have life everlasting. 
from the fathers of the rose right to the frontier. There are men and women who are saying, Apostle, do not end this meeting without giving me an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. And I want you to give me the honor as my final assignment in this place to lead you to this Jesus, not another one, this Jesus. The one who heals, the one who empowers, the one who gives life beyond the grave. Wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. I'd like you to leave your seat and I want you to come and stand right before me here. We love you. We're one big family. Doesn't matter how far you've gone away from Jesus, there's always room at the cross. I begin my counting now. Oh, such a beautiful song. Go ahead. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Everywhere. Everywhere. Come. Everyone, please come. Let's celebrate them as they come. Come on, US. Is this how you celebrate salvation? Can you hear it, no kid? Can you hear him knocking? He's been knocking very Come, long. keep coming. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's been knocking for so long. Can you hear him knocking? Jesus is knocking now. Is at the door. Come. There's always room at the cross. Come. Someone's calling out your name. Calling time and time again. Can you hear it? celebrate a final harvest final harvest amazing what the king can do now please listen to me all of you who are here standing thank you thank you thank you for responding to this call thank you there are still people coming come come Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly. You have come tonight responding to this call. Thank you for giving me the honor of leading you to this Jesus, the one who changed my life, the one who's changed our lives. Hallelujah. May I request that you lift your right hand if you can high above your head and say this as loud and as clear and as truthful as you can be. Say Lord Jesus. One more time say it Lord Jesus. Tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, 
I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep those hands lifted. Father, thank you. The Bible declares as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I decree and declare that you are blessed. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I impart grace upon you to live victorious Christian lives. You go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, very quickly, for those of you who are in front, um, there are counselors standing right behind and you will be given a card. That card has a QR code. Please do us a favor to scan the QR code and fill the information as required. Um, you may want to fill the card if you can and then return it to any of the ushers. Hallelujah. And then for those who made this decision from whatever nation you're connecting online, you would notice that there's a QR code. Please do well to scan. Let us know that you made Jesus Lord of your life and you'll be directed on what to do afterwards. But I bless all of you. Honored to have you in the fold. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. So make sure you pick the card on your way out. Please, those with the cards, wave it so they can see it. Do not return to your seat without the card. God bless you as you return, but make sure you pick the card and then you do well to feel it. Let's give them a big God bless you. Big God bless you. Hallelujah. This is the best you can do. Hallelujah. Amen. We're drawing the curtains finally. It's been an amazing time, brief but impactful time in the U.S. I want to say a very big thank you. Thank you, U.S., for receiving us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for giving us your attention, your commitment. I want to say a very big thank you. Um, I appreciate every man, every woman of God in ministry, um, for the many who we did not have the time to introduce you, just know that we honor you and we love you sincerely. Let's give them a big God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then for Pastor William McDowell, what do we tell him? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I love you and I thank you for coming. You and your team, may God bless you honor to have you around. Thank you. Pastor Lan, thank you. We honor you. We appreciate you greatly. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then to my friend and brother, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. Come on, America. Give Pastor Nat a big, big, big God bless you. He came with his wife and he came with his children. Let's give them a big God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I want to appreciate a very special team before we're done it would be unfair that we close this meeting without appreciating them they've been responsible for setting up this conference laboring night and day back and forth nigeria u.s and i want to appreciate my dear people thank you so much koinonia usa let's give them a big god bless you hallelujah thank you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Every single worker who served, prayed, gave, I want you to know that I love you. I'm indebted to you and I am deeply grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Many of you traveled from the farthest places. I want to say a very big thank you. Hallelujah. Very big thank you to all of you. I love you too. God bless you. Bless you real good. In the name of Jesus.
Amen. So we close on time. Just two important announcements to let you know that on Sunday, we're going to be having a Sunday service here in the U.S. Unfortunately, we're using the Will Rogers Memorial Hall, so I'm sure it may not be able to take, only takes 3,000 people. We already have about 1,500 workers. I'm sure it's exhausted, but you can always stream like you always do for all our services. And um, for those of you who have not connected to Koinonia, as our, um, our details, I wish the media could project if they have it. Else, you can go to our social media platform and connect and be blessed. You hear the testimonies, listen to the teachings, let it edify you, let it build you, and let it help you become a matured believer in the name of Jesus. And then are you happy to know that next week we're in Canada? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope Canada is ready. Amen. amen and amen. So 24th and 25th, Sound of Revival Canada. We're in Canada, three days, extraordinary moments of power, of grace. I'll be teaching, be ministering to the sick. For everyone, um, we're opening more doors for the tickets. In fact, we had to get an overflow. So you have your loved ones in Canada. Call them, make sure that they connect and then... They are there physically, 24th, Wednesday, and then a Thursday next week. And then afterwards, we return back to Abuja. Have you been blessed? Yes. Please rise up on your feet. When we share the grace, Pastor Nats, you're going, we're not going to allow you. Ah. <laughs> song in America Tempting me, put on your lights. Come on, let's do it. Put on your lights, everybody. Are you ready with your lights? Let this represent the revival fire. Fire upon the US in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. We are going to share the grace. Now watch this. When we wrap up, Pastor Nat, let's have 10 minutes of uncensored praise. Uncensored praise. Uncensored praise. You want to dance your next, yourself to your next level? Do you dance in America? Better than Africa? No way. No way. Hallelujah. Hold hands with someone. Let's end the service. Bring the conference to an end. Then dance a dance of victory. Dance a dance of revival. Shout a shout of revival. So when we are done with the grace, I would like to see what America can do. Hold hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you sent us here and you glorified your name in and through us. We pray that beyond the shoutings, we pray that beyond the cryings, we pray that beyond the excitement, let Jesus remain the epicenter of our lives. I pray that this revival fire, this revival flame that has rested upon everyone, Lord, let it spread to every city. Let it spread to every nation. Let it spread to every family. And I'm praying for you that the blessings of this revival, let it begin to speak in your life from tonight. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring the sound of revival US to a close. But the impact of the program will never come to a close. The program ends now with joy and rejoicing, but let the miracles begin. Let the testimonies continue in the name of Jesus. Together as a family, let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let it rest and abide with us now and forever. I love you, America. God bless America. The Lord has done it.
revival of your anointing of the new day of your favor of the breakthrough of rejoicing.